All right, round four or five or something. to being all the way up there. You know, without popping the thing loose off of the neck a little bit, it's not going to happen, so you really don't want to be, you know, that one's up there. That thing really, I mean, it's, it's, it's had a while to cool off there, but these frets are still almost too hot to touch, and this knife isn't hot at all, so I don't think I'm really transferring an awful lot of heat into that joint. So I probably pretty much just muscled my way through this. And I'm debating, since I'm so clear most of the way up here, I'm just going to heat this knife up and go in and cut the rest of this. Yeah, there's something right there. So right around in here with the flat edge, it's, it's wanting to catch. So by the time I blow steam down in there, it's going to loosen up whatever's going on right here anyway. But I think I'm going to go ahead and heat this up and, and go that route. So. last little bit here I'm gonna heat heat the iron up and uh, heat the knife up on the iron go that route unplug the heat blanket turn the power strip back on irons all the way up Are on. Get a good look at this this joint right here at the edge of the fretboard and the and the soundboard, uh, the top. I have absolutely no no marks along this line at all. Everything is really really clean. And I didn't I didn't run a razor blade around this one before I started. And I have on other instruments. This line over here is very, very clean as well. So very little touch-up, hopefully, when this is all said and done. 
Um, I the first couple resets I did uh, were actually on really inexpensive guitars, and you know they put them all together and then put you know an eighth of inch of urethane on them, a poly of some sort, and uh, so you have to go in and cut down in with the razor knife and, and basically cut that. It's like a fillet weld, you know. I mean, in the corner where the two pieces come together, it's just puddled in. And now on this guitar, on the on the 1950 Martin that I pulled the neck off of, uh, you don't have that sort of thing. Um, I I don't see any. Uh, you know, there's no puddling whatsoever here between the neck and the top. It's hard to tell at the neck joint. It looks like there could be a slight roll, but I would be my guess that they didn't they didn't finish these instruments together. Uh, so you know, they finish the neck, finish the body, put them together. They might come back and do just a slight touch up around the neck with a little lacquer, but they didn't. Uh, they sure didn't puddle it in there. So all I did when I prepping for this was just took the knife, the same knife, and uh, and just basically pushed the edge right around here, you know, all the way around it, down the side of the heel and across the back, the bottom at the very tip. And uh, just just pressed it just, just to make sure that there was a wasn't anything that was gonna hang me up when I got to this point. So I'm not sure if I'm in the frame here. Oh yeah, sort of. Just heating this knife up. And I'm gonna go in right from the end here of the fretboard. I'm not gonna go in at the edges because I don't want to take a chance more in that, that lacquer there. So we'll get the knife uh, pretty hot. The iron's pretty hot. So see if we can get in there and slice that last this little bit right past the 15th fret. Okay, let's see where that gets us. Slide in there pretty good. See, it's got a lot of gunk stuck to it now, so I'll have to clean that up. Pretty sure that if I were dealing with hide glue on this, that uh, I wouldn't be having quite this much trouble. Uh, it would be pushing in a little easier because the hide glue is a little more sensitive to heat. This is probably just some sort of carpenter's glue. Um, there and it wants to catch the edge of the fretboard on the way out. Here we go. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna actually leave this one in here because it's cool. That one's hot. Little pieces, little rolled up cubers of glue pulling out. I'm gonna push that on in there and leave it so it just keeps that separated so it doesn't reattach itself. I'm going to go ahead and drill a couple holes in the in the 15th fret slot there where the where the steam nozzle is going to go. Um, so my steam nozzle is 
somewhere around 62 thousandths. Um, I just picked up a new bit, a couple new bits. I'm sure I already had some laying around, but I wanted to be sure I had them when I was ready to roll. So I, I work in a hardware store. So I was there, so I just grabbed a couple bits. I paid for them. All right. Um, you got you got a truss rod coming through here, right? Truss rod is three sixteenths of an inch. It's adjusting on this on the on the headstock in uh, a lot. I won't I won't I don't even know fifty percent. There's more on the headstock and more on the body end. I think the vast majority uh, access from the sound hole on on acoustic guitars. The um, the dovetail joint. The end of the cavity is right at the 15th fret. So when you're when you're poking holes in here, you don't want to poke it in the center because you know, I don't know if it were a rear adjustment, then the rod would obviously be coming all the way through here. And uh, but uh, I don't know exactly how far that they extended the rod into you know into the this area. Okay, into the extension area uh, on a on a peg head adjustment style. So I obviously don't want to hit the, the truss rod, so I'm not going to drill in the center. I want to put a couple holes in. I don't have to like drill on the outside. I don't have to miss the dovetail. So basically, as long as I'm um, probably I'm going to say a quarter or three eighths either side of the center of this thing. I'm going to drop into the pocket, okay, right behind the dovetail. And uh, you know, I watched a lot of videos through the years of before I ever pulled the neck off, and nobody was really ever very clear. They said, "Oh, there's a gap there, and if you drill, it'll it'll drop." Nobody really said how far out. So I'm just saying it, okay, just so you have an idea. I'm going to pull this out because I don't want to drill it. And uh, this, this drill bit is 564 so it is um, 0 0.078, 78 thousandths. And I'm just eyeballing 3 eighths off center here, and because uh, it's certainly not critical. Then the, um, the other thing is that I always spin it backwards, because I'm going to drill all the way down to the bottom of that slot drill bit backwards because I don't want to chip the face of that that board um, so that's why I do that do the same thing if you're if you're putting a pick board uh, pick guard down on a, on a lacquered surface you know like an electric guitar where you drill holes for a pick guard uh, always spin the bit backwards get through the lacquer uh, so you don't blow chips out of it We're going down now. Should should hit a pocket. I hit a pocket. Look at it. Just dropped right through there. So that worked out exactly the way it's supposed to work out. How often does that happen? Okay, same thing. I ball in just three eighths or so past center, and that. Spinning it backwards, that three eighths is a fairly arbitrary number. Just make sure you miss the truss rod. You wouldn't have to have two holes, but I kind of like to have that that space when you push that in there. You can see if you're getting good steam by whether it's blowing out the other side. So drilling in, and barely. I mean, pretty much just the depth of that fret slot in the top itself. Well, not even the top. All the way. So, I'm not going to be steaming this off in this session. It's uh, after 8 p.m. I worked all day before I got out here this evening to do this. Just wanted to get this extension up and uh, get these holes drilled. And so, uh, you know, I was telling you what the size. The needle is 60, 62. It's the same as a 464 bit. So if I use the 464 bit, uh, 
or one sixteenth bit. I would be I would be pressed fit into this hole, and that would be a drag because you you don't want you don't want to have it that hard getting in and out. So it's a seventy eight thousandths hole. So uh, you got a little over ten thousandths of clearance there. The um, let me pull it out just for kicks and giggles. Got a little jar with the uh, the parts so far. So truss rod cover and the um, the front strap button, which is screwed into the side of the heel block, the uh, the neck heel. And so I'm going to measure the the width of this fret that was in there. I'm sure that uh, 78 will cover under this fret. And if it doesn't, it's going to be so stinking close. Well, if I'd have measured it first, I might not have gone with a 78 thousandths drill bit because it's exactly 78 thousandths. So, it's going to cover it, but it's just going to cover it. Yeah. I probably would have tried to have uh, gotten a number bit or something that was a little teeny smaller than 78. It just gave me a few thousandths over my needle. But, that's what we got. It'll cover. Even if it didn't cover, I grind up some rosewood dust and glue it into the hole when we're done and re-slot it and you'd never know the difference. But, why do that if you don't have to? Okay, that's it man. I'm done for this evening. Uh, got the fretboard extension loose. Got the holes drilled for the steam. Uh, put the little jack in there which didn't take any time at all but brought the top up to the exact place it was before we took the strings off. Uh, we could do this while we're here. I'm going to run over to a, um, a very flat surface, my joiner, and uh, just make sure that my old gauge is still dialed in at zero. We talked about this uh, last video, I believe, uh, a couple days ago. Uh, under string tension, uh, I had a bit of a belly. Uh, I, had, I had adjusted this. Oh, well, now I'm riding up because my extension's up. So that's I need a shorter, shorter straight edge, which I don't have. So this is going to make things interesting now that that extension has risen. I probably should have checked this before I pulled the extension. My bad. So just across the room, double checking zero on my joiner table, and it looks pretty good. I'm just it's about a thousandth off. So just changing that up. Okay. All right. And I'm just eyeballing everything here. I've got I'm good on this extension because apparently, you know, it's, it's moving a little bit when I do that. So apparently though, uh, it had some fall away on it so it wasn't touching previously. Because I've got, I've got constant pressure or constant, uh, I'm even, touching out all my frets even. This bottom of this piece of oak is very straight, touching all the frets evenly. And uh, I'm reading 70, one thousandths over here. So I just have to do the difference in the math. And I'm not going to do that right now. So I got to see how many times this goes around. So there's one around. Once around, and so it went once around. So I got 170. If I, if I slide that all the way up to the saddle, because this top of this bridge is a little slanted. So 170 thousandths. 
and you go. So from, from the top of the fretboard, the top of the saddle, or excuse me, top of the bridge is 170 thousandths higher than the fretboard, okay? They should be pretty much the same height. Uh, you might even want to be just a fuzz low on the bridge. Uh, but if you, if you come off this bridge off the top of these frets and you're lined up with the top of your bridge, I'm sorry, off the top of the neck, um, fretboard off the top of the frets and you land on top of your bridge you're gonna you'll be perfect so anyway 170 now that is different than it was the other day when I had it apart checking the same stuff uh, because I didn't double check that bridge height with the jack and make sure that the top was up under string tension so uh, that, that changed that number so anyway uh, in fact, I wrote it right here on the bench. I had 155 thousandths the other day. So by jacking that bridge back up to where it was at, um, I, I gained another uh, 15, 15 thousandths. So I'm going to write that number down now. All right, so there's a formula. Uh, and it's basically you know, how you find a square, right, of a, to make a triangle square, uh, a little tweak. And that formula will get you how much you need to take out of the heel of the guitar in order to, uh, to get the right angle, to bring it up to the point where you, you make up for that 170 thousandths of difference there. Okay, I'm done. Uh, we'll talk to you later, guys. Thanks for watching.